All right. So today is Thursday, April 23rd. It's our second to last day on our novel study. So we are getting super close to the end. Um, and I'm really excited. Today we're still working on characterization. So just like we were in the beginning um, of the week, we are back to that. So again, we are, Kipsters will be able to describe characters in detail using traits, feelings, motivations. Same notes are here for you. You can look over them again. Um, today, once again, we identify our character traits, feelings, and emotions by using steel. Um, we look at what the character says, what they think, their effect on others, their actions, and their looks. And if we go down to our steps, we're going to mark up our question. We're going to go back and look at the steel clues. We're going to ask ourselves one of those three questions, depending on what our um, question is asking us. Are we looking for character motivation? We would then ask ourselves, why did the character do that? If we're looking for character feelings, we're asking ourselves, how would this make me feel? And if we're looking for character traits, we ask for, what does this tell me about the character? Then we make our inference. So we choose our answer and we find our evidence to support our question. So let's go through. We are on to chapter 25. Um, at this point in the story, we know that Winn-Dixie is still missing. So let's find out and see if we can find Winn-Dixie. Chapter 25. We heard the music before we even got into Gloria Dump's house. We heard it almost a block away. It was a guitar playing and singing and clapping. I wonder what's going on, my father said. We walked up to Gloria's sidewalk and around back, through her yard and into her kitchen. What we saw was Otis playing his guitar and Miss Franny and Gloria sitting there smiling and singing and Gloria holding Sweetie Pie in her lap. Amanda and Dunlop and Stevie were sitting on the kitchen floor clapping along and having the best time possible. Even Amanda was smiling. I couldn't believe they were so happy when, when Dixie was missing. We didn't find him, I shouted at them. The music stopped and Gloria Dump looked at me and said, Child, we know you didn't find him. You didn't find him because he was right here all along. Now pause because in the very beginning, that's what our example question is. So we're going to look right here at this section for... Um, our first question before we move on. So at that point, they still hadn't found him. How does Opal feel when she returns to the party? So when she's coming back to the party, how is she feeling? Is she excited to join the singing? Is she frustrated that they are happy while Winn-Dixie is missing? Is she feeling happy because she found Winn-Dixie? Or is she nervous because she doesn't know what to say to everybody? So our first step is to mark up the question. So we're looking for Opal. We're looking for how she feels. And we're looking when, this is when she returns to the party. So how does she feel when she returns to the party in the very beginning? Now we've marked up our question. We've got, we're going to go through our highlighted area and look for our um, steel clues. And we're going to ask ourselves, how would we feel? So right here, we just read this out loud. So she walked up um, to the kitchen. They saw Otis playing the guitar. They saw Miss Franny Block smiling and singing and Gloria holding Sweetie Pie in her lap. These are her thoughts the whole time. Amanda and Dunlop and Stevie were sitting on the kitchen floor, clapping along and having the best possible time. Even Amanda was smiling. I couldn't believe they were so happy when when Dixie was missing. We didn't find him, I shouted. So these are her thoughts and her words. Right here, the biggest piece of evidence I see is her thought right here. I couldn't believe they were so happy when when, Glor when when Dixie was missing. So how would that make me feel if I walked into that house and I saw them all happy and my dog was missing? No, None of them were helping me find the dog and they were all happy when I was mad. That would make me pretty upset. So now I'm going to look through my answers. So is she excited to start joining and singing? She does not sound excited. They're all happy, but she's not. Is she frustrated that they are happy when Winn-Dixie is missing? I definitely think that could be an answer, but I'm going to read through the other ones to see because I think I would feel frustrated if everyone else was happy while my dog was missing. That would frustrate me. Is she happy because she found Winn-Dixie? She hasn't found Winn-Dixie yet, so when she first returns, she doesn't know where Winn-Dixie is. And is she nervous because she doesn't know what to say? It doesn't seem like she's nervous. What I would say is she's definitely frustrated. So I'm going to highlight that answer. Now, which detail proves that she's frustrated? Even Amanda was smiling. 
That does bother her, but that doesn't necessarily prove that she's frustrated. I couldn't believe they were so happy when when Dixie was missing. That definitely shows me that she's frustrated, but let's keep seeing. Amanda and Dunlap and Stevie were sitting on the kitchen floor, clapping along and having the best time ever. So that might frustrate me. Those are her thoughts, so that could be it, but I still think B is a better answer. And then what I saw was Otis playing the guitar. That doesn't prove that she's frustrated. So this is what would prove it. And oh, I'm sorry, I should have marked up my question first. So we're looking for a detail from chapter 25 that shows how Opal feels. Perfect. There we go. So you're going to have a question that doesn't have a part B. And then you're going to have a part A and a part B about the end of the party. And then I do have also a bonus question for you that I want you to answer. And if you answer it, um, you'll get some bonus points. So we're going to keep reading and see what happens next. Right here. The music stopped and Gloria Dump looked at me and said, Child, we know you didn't find him. You didn't find him because he was right here all along. She took her cane and poked at something under her chair. Come on out of there, she said. There was a shuffle and a sigh. He's asleep, she said. He's plumb wore out. She poked him around with her cane again, and when Dixie stood up from underneath her chair and yawned, when Dixie, I hollered. Dog, Gertrude squeaked. When Dixie wagged his tail and showed me all his teeth and sneezed, I went pushing past everybody. I dropped to the floor and wrapped my arms around him. Where have you been? I asked him. He yawned again. How did you find him? I asked. Now there's a story, said Miss Franny. Gloria, why don't you tell it? Well, said Gloria Dump, we was all just sitting around waiting on you two. And after I convinced these Dewberry boys that I ain't no scary witch, all full of spells and potions. She ain't no witch, Stevie said. He shook his bald head. He looked kind of disappointed. Nah, said Dunlop, she ain't. If she was, she would have turned us into toads by now, he grinned. I could have told you that she wasn't a witch. Witches don't exist, said Amanda. They are just myths. All right now, said Gloria. What happened was, we got through all them witchy things, and then, pull it up here, Franny said, why don't we have a little music while we wait for you two to get back? And so Otis played his guitar, and woo-wee, there ain't a song he don't know. And if he don't know it, he can pick it up right quick, and if you hum it to him, he has a gift. Gloria stopped and smiled over at Otis, and he smiled back. He looked all lit up from the inside. Tell, tell what happened, Sweetie Pie said. Tell about the dog. So, said Gloria, Franny and me, we started thinking about all these songs we knew from when we was girls. We got Otis to play them, and we started singing them, teaching the words to these children. And then somebody sneezed. Sweetie Pie shouted. That's right, said Gloria. Somebody sneezed, and it wasn't none of us. So we looked around, wondering who did, thinking that maybe we got us a burglar in the house. We looked around, and we didn't see nothing. So we started to si we started into singing again. And sure enough, there was another bit big achoo. Sounded like it was coming from my bedroom. So I sent Otis in there. I said, Otis, go on in there and see who's sneezing. So Otis went. And do you know what he found? I shook my head. When Dixie, shouted Sweetie Pie. That dog of yours, all underneath my bed, squeezed under there like world was about to end. And he, But he was smiling like a fool every time he heard Otis play the guitar, smiling so hard he sneezed. My daddy laughed. It is true, Miss Franny said. It's the truth, said Stevie. Dunlop nodded and smiled right at me. So, Gloria Dump said, Otis played his guitar right to that dog, and a little bit at a time when Dixie came creeping out from underneath the bed. He looked just like a ghost, said Dunlop. Yeah, said Sweetie Pie, just like a ghost. Ghost, mm-hmm, said Gloria, just like a ghost. Anyway, the storm stopped after a while, and your dog settled in under my chair and fell asleep, and that's where he, he's been ever since, just waiting on you to come back and find him. When Dixie, I said, I hugged him so tight he wheezed. We were out there whistling and calling for you, and you were right here all along. 
thank you, I said to everybody. Well, said Gloria Dump, we didn't do nothing. We just sat here and waited and sang some songs. We all got to be good friends. Now, the punch ain't nothing but water, and the egg salad sandwiches got tore up by the rain. You got to eat them with a spoon if you want egg salad. But we got pickles to eat, and we still got a party going on. My daddy pulled out a, chi a kitchen chair and sat down. Otis, he said, do you know any hymns? I know some, said Otis. You hum it, said Franny, nodding her head, and he can play it. My daddy started humming, and something, humming something, and Otis started picking it out on his guitar. And when Dixie wagged his tail and lay back down underneath Gloria's chair, I looked around the room at all the different faces, and I felt my heart swell up inside of me with pure happiness. I'll be back in a minute, I said. But they were all singing now and laughing, and when Dixie was snoring, so no one heard me. So that's the end of chapter 25. We only have one chapter left. I want you to think about first, before we go to the chapters, where do you think um, Opal went? She said, I'll be back in a minute. But they were all singing and laughing and when Dixie was snoring, so no one heard me. And we'll find out tomorrow where she went. All right, but so up here, what you have is you have three questions. So you're looking first. It says, what does the sentence, he looked all lit up from inside, reveal about Otis? So if you remember, I'll highlight it right here for you. It says it right here. So you can look there and all around it and see what do they mean by that. Then the next part is about Opal. How does Opal feel at the end of the story? Which detail from chapter 25 shows you how she feels? So you can look right here. And see how do you think she's feeling? And then find your evidence to prove your answer. Um, and then the final question I just want you to be thinking about is this bonus one. How did Opal's party impact or how did it affect all the characters in Because of Winn-Dixie? So why was this party so important? And that's your bonus question. All right. Tomorrow we'll finish up our story. I'm so excited to um, have you guys see the ending. And we'll talk tomorrow about Central Message. Bye.